Everyone's contributing something different. We're all capturing this differently. It is sensory overload. And the best thing is that we want you here. Every single queer person, every single ally has a place in this organization. And that's what I've been so happy to do. I started out here setting the tables that are going to be at the dinner tonight, stuffing the envelopes and the booklets, handing out the donor cards. This is a fundraiser, obviously. And that's how you get started. That's how you meet people. And that's where it all begins. And then you just meet the people who say, hey, I need you to fill in with the red carpet. And that's what you're doing all of a sudden. I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't, which means you can do this too. This is so much fun. I'm just excited to be here. I'm meeting some amazing people, people who've had lasting influences in my own life, who've created this monster. How many of these trans people like Jenny Boylan would ever think they'd be interviewed by another trans person? We are here with Jenny Boylan. I've been meaning to talk to you all week. I have so much to ask you. This woman here is amazing, a trans trailblazer. She's an author, a professor, oh, look a board member of GLAD, stepping down this year after her term expires. And you have a brand new book, and I want to ask you And I have all. a new book. Okay, let's start with the book. Long Black Veil, uh, which has just been published by Penguin Random House. And uh, it's a mystery. It starts off um, in 1980, where six college friends find themselves uh, goofing around behind the walls of an abandoned prison when they get locked in and just as quickly find that behind those walls they are not alone. So, um, most of the book takes place in the present when all of those young people are now grown up and they have to figure out uh, how to deal with the burden of what has happened to them. So it's about secrets um, and don't be shocked if there might just be a transgender character in there somewhere. And under Sarah Kate's leadership, Glad has um, become a, a, a fighting machine. Um, and most importantly, I think we've, I mean, we always did transgender work, but transgender work is now almost 50% of our mission. Oh my gosh, darling, I haven't seen you since Katie Couric's Gender Revolution. Yeah, it has been a while. I We're on Facebook Live, all right? How are you doing? I'm alright, how are you? Good, I know it's been a rough couple months for you with the changes in the court schedule and the new court nominee. How do you feel right now about your case on a very broad level? I mean, you know, it's still live, it's still out there. Um, yes, and yes. And kind of whatever happens, happens. I'm oh, rolling awesome. a bunch of yeah. What I want to ask you about is you're a senior. Mm -hmm. It is prom season. Right. I want to know. Do you have a date yet? Do you need a date? <laughs> well, um, so me and my uh, friends are all kind of going as a group, but it's kind of funny. Um, me and one of my buddies are getting like a couple's ticket to save on the money for the prom ticket, so we're joking around that we're going together. Um, but no, we're, I'm just going in with my uh, group of friends. Would you be open if there was a video request or petition to be somebody's prom date? I mean, I think you're one of the most eligible high school seniors in the entire country, especially if you just confirmed everybody you're going with friends like I don't know I see like you've got the name you've got the look you've got a fantastic <laughs> suit thank you um, I, that would be like really cute and really flattering. But then for people to come up to me and be like, you know, you're inspiring to me. Uh, I, I appreciate you and what you're doing. Like every single time someone says that to me, it's like the same amount of surreal and crazy and flattering and honoring that it was the very first time. Um, I don't know that I'll ever get used to it, but it's a really special feeling. I got to write about you for Refinery. Oh, awesome. Oh, I read that piece. That was incredible. Thank you. This is Zeke Smith, everybody. Hi. Survivor. I've got Zeke and Gavin together. Like I said, this is the most amazing combination ever because you fought for the right to use a public bathroom. You fought for the right to be hundreds of miles away from a public bathroom. That's right, to, to poop exclusively in the ocean. <laughs> I think it really goes to show that people who are trans, and this matters to me personally, are such are more than the sum of our parts. Yeah, I think totally. Well, I think, you know, look, this guy's a fucking rock star. And <laughs> I've had nine months for to get ready for something pretty scary to happen while he's been in his fight, you know, moving towards the Supreme Court. And I followed this guy's lead. He's been the guy who's inspired me. So I'm just, I'm so excited to meet him. Now, can you tell me a bit about those nine months? Because this happened, obviously. I know you had a conversation with the editors at CBS about how you were going to handle this. 
because it could have easily not gone on the air at all. And I know you, you know, were advocating for this is so important. You schooled an entire country <laughs> on how to respect people. You are not needing a cheerleader. And I will remember that line forever. That just blew everyone away. Thank you. Because you can and literally have done so many amazing things. And what I really want to know, though, is... What was it like watching the clock tick down? Like, how did you live those nine months? Yeah, it was a nine-month um, countdown, and I, like, I just surrounded myself by a the the people I loved. Uh, I surrounded myself by my friends, and they have all rallied to my defense and, and been there for whatever I needed. Uh, there's a guy standing over there who I, I think is one of my heroes. His name's Nick Adams. He's the yes. director of Vlad's transgender media program, and he is he has held the hand of like everyone who has had to walk into the public spotlight. Uh, and kind of like taught me how to be trans on a public stage. Um, he's been great, and then like, I've had an amazing partnership with Jeff Probst and Survivor. I mean, I'm just uh, in awe of that guy. Uh, he, he made a lot of promises about how well this would be handled, how I wouldn't be exploited, and how he would never leave me hanging, and he kept every one of those. Uh, yeah, and I didn't think about the whole, you're waiting nine months for this. I didn't even, I mean, of course it was filmed forever ago. I didn't even think about that, but that's pretty crazy. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how I would have handled that. <laughs> oh, I, you would have been fine. You would have been fine, man. Trust me. <laughs> Yeah. Ah, we just talked to Zeke. We just talked to Gavin. Ah. Hello. How are you? Hello, everybody. This is Ross Matthews. Hi. He'll be hosting us tonight. Yes, I will. You look fantastic. Thank you so much. This is the first gown I've ever worn, but I've only been a girl for four years. How do you feel? So. Oh, it is fantastic. Good? You're tripping, quite literally. Good. Well, you look great. And now this is my fourth time hosting um, the Glad Awards. Can you believe that? I can't even believe that. Um, but this is a very special year. It feels different. You know, there's a lot going on in the world. So we're going to break it down um, and we're going to be real, real. Not mean, but just real. I think that we like the same dresses. Yeah. Okay, we're going to get some Deborah Messing pictures right now. This is just gorgeous. Look at this jumpsuit. Oh, I thought we were going to get Deborah Messing. I'm here with Batu and Naya, but I don't think our viewers often get to see people who are coming from Iraq, people who might be practicing a Muslim faith, being open about being LGBTQ. Can you talk a little about how your faith influences your ability to live so, openly? We never know there is an LGBT community. We always thought we're, we're, maybe what we're doing is wrong. Until I watch the Guerra Spal show, which is after that, I know, oh my god, there's uh, other life for us in other side of the world that we have to be there so we could, you know, live who we are without meeting, without praying. So, and that's how we work hard to get there take us at least seven years. Come here. We are on Facebook Live. Yes. This is with LGBTQ Nation. I'm filling in for Don Ennis. Oh, hello, LGBTQ Nation. It's Miss Ross, if you're nasty. Miss Ross of Trans Tech Social. Yes. On the Daily Show. Yeah. Her, story. Her, her story. I was getting to that. Everything. Yeah. <laughs> if it is trans, you are involved with it. I am paying Thank you. you. Name it. How does it feel to be up for so many different things today? It's just nice. Like either you win or you win. We, well, you know, we're all winners here, but who the real winner is, is a trans community because never before have we had this much visibility. I would always come to LGBTQ events and I would see not that many trans people. Every year it's gotten bigger and better and I am so excited about tonight. And how does it feel? Did you ever think that one day you would be interviewed by a trans reporter? No, I actually did not think that. So the world is changing and good look. It's a good, good look. Trans people can do anything. All right, we've got Sarah Kate Ellis, the director of GLAAD. Up oh, here we are. Oh my gosh, we are live on Facebook. This is for LGBTQ Nation. Yes. I'm actually filling in for Dawn Ennis. So it's an all-trans reporting team. She's got kids. Oh, I do too. So nice to meet you. I want to hear a little bit about the resistance. What is GLAAD working on right now? What keeps you up at night? So we were the first to report that the White House uh, took down the LGBTQ page in January. In February, we, we were one of the first to release the leaked EO on religious, so-called religious freedom. We recently just released the audio on Secretary, the nominee secretary for Secretary of Army, Mark Green, that ended up in him withdrawing yesterday. So we've been incredibly active in the resistance and holding this administration accountable, and we're tireless at it. Tireless. This is the cast of South Salem, about 12 LGBTQ lesbian women who were imprisoned for crimes they did not commit. 
My name's Hannah. I'm with the LGBTQ Nation. Hi, Anna. My so, name is Anna. Anna, nice to meet you. Okay, just speak up. So, tell us about Southwest of Salem and how this experience is here tonight. Well, you know, unfortunately, this is uh, not fictional. It's actually a true story that, it, and it is about our life, and uh, we are the subjects. But it, it's a it's a film, a documentary that was made, and it tracks the time that we were in prison all the way that leads up to our exoneration and the many people that came in to help us to help set us free. So the power of the media is just huge, it's just amazing. But um, you know we're here, we're exonerated, we're, it's an honor to be here at GLAD and you know we're just trekking on, helping others. See this is amazing and I think this is what GLAD is all about. That amazing and positive LGBTQ representation doesn't necessarily have to be happy stories. Do you find sure. that? Yes. Aisha from the University of Louisville yes. and June from Boston College and Monique over here from Elan University in North Carolina. So three diverse places and I just want to hear a little bit about the grants you received and how you're going to use them. Super quick just for the viewers today. Yeah, so I'm going to use my grant to design materials to release to a mass audience in order to get our social justice endeavors out and to rebrand the University of Global's LGBT site. Um, with my Turner Visionary Grant, I plan on creating a scholarship for queer undergrad students and to build a really robust and sustainable network between current undergrads and queer alumni. I'm going to be using my grant to create an online and print news source in, for, in my county for uh, a coalition of social justice works that have come together in North Carolina. And because bathrooms have been such a big battleground in our state, it will be called the Toilet Times. And Zachary, oh my gosh, come here. How are you, darling? Good. I'm filling in for Don Ennis tonight at LGBTQ Nation. Oh my Nation. goodness. Hi, LGBTQ Nation. Don't we know everybody? This is amazing. How are you, darling? Good. How are so you? Good to see you. Yes. Hi, Don. We miss you. <laughs> now, I'm sure season four of Transparent is filming now. We just wrapped. We Tuesday. just wrapped. Okay. <laughs> what are we going to see? Give us some idea. Oh my goodness. Season two took us to Germany. Season three brought us back to the States and delved in deeper yes. to this wonderful Pepperman <laughs> family brought us closer to our faith and to God. What are we going to see in season four? I, season four was absolutely our most ambitious and most challenging season yet. Hello, Bobby. Nice to meet you. Thank you. This is LGBTQ Nation Hello. right here. Hello, everybody. We're recording live now. We're going to put this up later as well. We're super excited to talk to you. Okay. So tell us about Texas right now. Tell us about Texas A&M. Oh, my goodness. Well, Texas actually is experiencing a lot of discriminatory laws um, being passed through the state legislatures. That is extremely disappointing um, to know that a lot of uh, people from the trans community are worrying about if they can even use a bathroom. What hasn't gone? done. Um, they, they're extremely perfect. Um, they, they're really, they just know who to talk to, who to go to first. Um, and that's extremely important for me because uh, being a college student, my job is to study for tests and um, succeed and learn and not really to track down journalists and reporters and media. Glad is absolutely perfect about getting my story connected to people. And here we got to meet a lot of amazing people. And as you can tell, the personalities here, it's like when you have to come out, it doesn't make you a nice person, but the odds, just the connection between being such a sweet human being and having to deal with all of this craziness that is coming out, that is coming into yourself as a trans person, as a non-binary person, as a gay person, a lesbian, a bisexual, as owning your intersex identity, all of these different labels that we use, but I think the most important label that everyone I've met here falls into is just nice, warm, caring, beautiful, and human. I gotta get myself on the red carpet for just a moment.